Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Craig. Craig is from Suffolk in England. So let's see what Craig has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. How's it going, man? Hello, Craig. How are you? Good, mate. You're all right. Good, good. Happy how, is, how are things today? Yeah, really good, man. It's started snowing today. It's really cold. I know, I know. I, I meant to go for a run this morning, but uh, it was so windy and snowing, so I'm not sure uh, it would be a good idea. <laughs> How's it sure? Yeah, no, that would be, uh, be really cold, dude. Yeah. Okay, Greg, so just before we start the game, just tell me where you're from. I'm from Suffolk in England. Barry right. Sevens. Okay, and what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. I work in a food factory as a maintenance engineer, so I basically just fix um, food processing machinery. Okay, and um, in your opinion, what do you like the most about your job? Um, it's di every day is different, mate. I literally just wait for the phone to ring or whatever's broken, I'll go and fix it. So it's not, it's some stuff's repetitive, but it's kind of fresh every day. I see. Okay, just before we start the game, just tell me something interesting about yourself. I was checking out your YouTube channel, checking out your um, Instagram, should have a lot of interesting things to share. Tell me something yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I jo joined the military when I was 16, really young, as soon as I left school. <clears throat> uh, my dad served as well, so I think that kind of pushed me into... It didn't force me into doing it, but it made me want to do it. Um, yeah, I did six years in the military, uh, two tours in Afghan, seven months each. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I left because I sort of completed my goals and everything, started the apprenticeship in the engineering, and then sort of rekindled my passion with the outdoors and the camping, and. It's like my happy place. That's amazing. That's amazing. And so you were six years doing the military uh, career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you go to different places in the world? Like it was yeah. in Afghanistan and... Yeah, I did um, Yeah, two seven-month tours in Afghanistan. Um, I've been to Dubai, Cyprus, Wales, Scotland, um, Germany, Austria. Oh I've god. been everywhere, mate. That's amazing. Oh my god. I'm sure you have a lot of stories to tell. A lot. <laughs> yeah, how are you, man? How are you today? You keeping well? Yes, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm originally from Brazil. I've been living in England for the last 14 years. Um, I lived in Portugal before as well for four, five, five years before I moved to the UK. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I, I love London. I think less life. I was British because I just love being here. I, just, I feel yeah. like home. I what, brought you to, what, what brought you to London then? Um, very good question. Very good question. Oh, I meant I meant I would meant to be the one who asked me questions, not you. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no. Um, basically, the main the main reason was the language. When I was 12 years old, I started studying English, and um, I just felt passionate about the language. And uh, I, I always want to live in a country where the first language is English. Um, so people from Brazil, they tend to go to America. There is a lot of Brazilian people, they tend to go to America, but it's very difficult, it's hard to get a visa. Yeah, and my parents right. didn't have the opportunity, they didn't have the, and they could afford um, to, to take me to, uh, to America. So I just had the opportunity to go to Portugal and uh, said, okay, let, let me start, you know, slowly. And I've been here in London for the last 14 years and uh, London is home for me now. I love being here. It's, it's a good place, it's a good place to be. I love being here. Awesome. Yeah, good. Okay, Greg, so welcome to William in the Magic Box. Lovely box here full of random fun questions, okay? So yeah. what are we going to do now? I'm just going to play a music just for us to get in the mood before the first question. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Hope you like the music. Let's do it. Right, Greg, ready for the first question? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do so it. the first the first question is, what's the best advice have you ever received? The best Greg. advice I ever received? Do what makes you happy. Don't follow the crowd. Just because something may seem like the right thing to do or the right path to take, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You've got to do you, man. Good, very good. Actually, mm. I, I, would, I would say the same as well. I think when uh, you just follow your intuition, you follow the, you know, what you like doing, that's it. There's yeah, no... Don't, don't there's follow no the crowd. Absolutely. And it's nice to be different as well, isn't it? It's nice for you to go in a different part of the crowd, you know? That's, that's, it, where, the, that's where the risks are. That's where yeah. the, the possibilities and everything are. It's good. Yeah. Second question. Let's, Let's do it. Go. Right, Greg, before the next question, tell me a little bit about your YouTube channel. Oh, the YouTube channel. I've only 
just sort of started the YouTube channel. Uh, a few people on Instagram messaged me just saying, hey man, you should start a YouTube channel. So I try and edit it really raw rather than getting loads of like close-ups and angles. I try and make it just a really raw footage of just what I'm doing basically. I don't, there's no trickery or anything like that. It's just what I'm doing. If you don't want to watch it, then just that's what I'm doing basically, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, it's just, it's about wild camping. Basically, it's just my adventures of what I get up to when I wild camp. I am going to start incorporating some more tips and more engagement with people. So if they want to start doing it, there's some ideas, things to look out for, stuff like that. But currently, it's kind of just recording me doing what I'm doing. Very good, very interesting, very good. Next question is, um, describe yourself in a positive and a negative word only. A positive or a negative? Easy going. Positive one? Easy going, mate. Yeah, don't take anything too seriously. And a negative one? Um, overthinker. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, uh, overthinker, mate. It's, uh, it's interesting because uh, through the years, you know, when you realize your, your, your um, let's say, your um, weak points in your life. I think I, I learned that when you when I start to overthink and you know what I do? I start um, I start to watch my breathing. And like it's like a it's like a habit. If you start doing it, you forget about everything. It's so it for me works well. Sometimes when I find myself in that mood of thinking, think, analyzing, analyzing, I yeah. just kind of start um, um, pay attention to my breathing breathing and uh, it goes away for a minute. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get another question for you, Greg. Greg, before the next question, tell me um, something about your experience in Afghanistan. Tell me, like, uh, uh, yeah, something interesting when you were there, your experience. Okay, um, my main job role out there was basically to protect Camp Bastion and the surrounding areas. So I was out trying to find um, IED teams, digging in roadside bombs, um, protecting the flight path of the planes coming in and out for anyone trying to basically shoot the planes down and to protect camp bashing itself we'd patrol out up to like say 10 miles from the camp and basically just patrol all the areas making sure the towns and the, the villages were safe oh and how long were we there for seven months i was there um was yep. i did a lot did a lot of work with the u.s marines i was attached to them for a little bit just doing some patrols with them they were really good guys we did get in quite a lot of fights um, my second tour, we were the last unit at Camp Bastion. So we were in the last two planes to leave, and that was a bit more quiet, but it was it was still exciting, man. Very good. Oh my God, wow. Right, um, good question. Tell us about your earliest memory in life. My earliest memory, I think, was when I lived in Cyprus as a little kid, and there were my mum is petrified of wasps, and I just remember out being in like the stroller, and getting attacked by wasps and my mum basically just ran away and left me in the pushchair with all the wasps. I didn't get stung, but she panicked so much. And that's one of my earliest memories. That's funny. Do you have <laughs> brother and sister as well? Yeah, I've got one brother. He's, um, well, I'm 27, 28 next month. My brother's 17, so there's nearly 11 years difference there. Oh, wow. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Another question? Go for it. Let's do it. For the next question, um, about wild, wild camping, um, what is for you, what's your favorite season and what's your worst season of um, doing wild camping? Favorite season? It's got to be the summer, man, hasn't it? Who doesn't like the summer? That, you know, but, um, I like all the seasons, mate. Every season is a different challenge, <clears throat> especially with winter at the minute. Lighting the fires and preparing all your wood is a lot harder, but I think the summer, man, everything's just easier in the summer. That's my favorite time. Next question is, what do you think is a good age to start dating and why? Start dating? Yeah, what's a good age for your opinion and why? Probably got to be when you're a teenager, mate. When you're at school, that's when it's all exciting and like, you're all giddy, aren't you? When you're a teenager, you just get the butterflies and <laughs> yeah, not obviously not too early, but I'm probably 14, I'd say. Yeah, me too. I think when 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 you feel safe, when you think, okay, I'm safe about you know dating. Yeah, there are no yeah. rules. I think, yeah, uh, sure. 
I enjoyed the show so far, Greg. Yeah, man, it's awesome. I'm having a good time. Let's get another question. Right before the next question, um, tell me I scare, one of the scariest moments you had during your military uh, career. One of the scariest moments I had? Okay. Um, it was the middle of the night and we were in a little patrol base, this is with the Americans, and an Afghan local came to the camp basically saying, I know where there's a Taliban commander, I know where there's a Taliban commander, come with me, come with me. Now, I, in my opinion, the British would say, hold on a minute, that sounds a bit dodgy. But the American commander was like, right, rally the troops, we're going out. And we followed this local through the desert for like two hours. And then it got to a point where we were in a valley and nothing happened. They led us to the house and that we'd done some arrests and stuff like that. But going into the valley, all I could think about was getting ambushed at the top. And although we'd done some fighting before and all that, I think when the bullets start coming in, it's the easiest time. It's the build up that's the scary bit when you don't know what's going to happen. So that, that was scary, man. Just walking into this valley, just that's all I could think about. Oh my God, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very scary. Okay, um, what was your favorite part about school? My favorite part about school? I hated school, man. <laughs> I hated school. <laughs> my favorite part about school was messing around in the class. It was just it was cracking jokes and being the, being the silly one, mate. That was my favorite part. I did like doing um, design and technology. I liked the, doing the music lessons as well, playing the guitar and stuff, that was awesome. But because um, I, I work on my hands and stuff, I, I love doing um, the design technology, building things. Oh, very interesting, very good. There's always a, a, a good part about school, even if you didn't like it, there's always yeah, a good thing. There's, there's always a good bit, yeah, of course. <laughs> Next question. All right, next question for you. Um, where are you planning to go for your next holidays? Next holiday, <clears throat> I want to go somewhere local. Well, I say local. It'll be in the. It'll be in England. I want to go to the Lake District. Um, okay. Again, I've been to Lake District before. It's so beautiful. Um, I've got a camper van that's getting a new engine on Friday. So the plan okay. is, when, when the lockdown's over and everything, and we can travel, I want to get in a camper van and get up to the Lake District. Very good. I've never been there actually. I've never been there. Oh, you've got to visit, mate. It's beautiful. It's like a poor man's Austria. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Ooh. Another question for Greg. Let's do Greg. Right, before the next question, sorry, I'm going to keep asking questions about that because I'm very interesting about uh, your career. Um, and um, what, what for you, what was the most challenging part of being there uh, during your military career, the most challenging part? The most challenging part was walking for miles with such a heavy rucksack. <laughs> Because you're, you're in the desert heat and we didn't, I was there for the summer and the winter and the summer I got up, it was getting up to like 55, 56 degrees and when you're carrying like a hundred pounds worth of kit, like it, it is hard mate, that was the hardest part for me, it was just, even though you're physically fit, you, know, you just can't be prepared for constantly walking with weight all the time, you know, you might go on a four or five day trek for fun with your friends, but when you're doing it day in, day out constantly, it just, it's, it's tiring. And how does work the, the training before you get there? There's like a lot of preparation, a lot of training, you need a lot of tests as well, I believe. Yeah, we do um, We do six months pre-deployment training before we get there. So we're out in Scotland and Wales to try and get used to all the hills and stuff like that. And we've got to do all our shooting and um, first aid, medical stuff, and all our skills and drills that we're going to be doing out there. But yeah, there's a good six months solid training before you leave. Are you glad that you've done this uh, this experience in your life? Yeah, man. I wouldn't change it. I've, it was some of the best times of my life and the worst, but I think you've got to go through ups and downs, don't you? But I did enjoy it. I don't regret it, and I'd do it again if I could go back. Very good, very good. Right, next question is, um, tell us about your best holiday and why did you consider that? My best holiday? Probably... Best holiday? Gran Canaria my best holiday, because it's lovely weather, lots of drinking, nice, broken area. nice water. Um, I was staying in my dad's got like a timeshare apartment out there. Right. So it was awesome just to pitch up man and stay in that for a week, like it was, it was wicked. 
I love Gran Canaria. I've been there a few times as well. It's so nice, isn't it? It's very chill yeah. there. There is no stress at all. You just go just there and relax. Chill, but... chill vibes. Enjoy the sun. <laughs> have a drink. <laughs> That's what we like. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get another one. Okay, next question is, um, what did you want to be growing up? I wanted to be a sniper, mate. Yeah? <laughs> I wanted to be what I did. I just followed the path, man. I just did what I had to do. That, that is what I wanted to be. I think when I was really young, I wanted to cut grass for the council. You know, on the, you know the ride on um, grass cutters? Yeah. That's what, I wanted to be everything when I was a kid. I wanted to cut grass as a council. I wanted to be a solicitor. <laughs> I wanted to be um, an archaeologist. Oh, but I think when I got to my teenage years and you really start to know what you want to do, I, yeah, I wanted to join the military. Absolutely. And your dad always encouraged you, I believe. He always, always yeah. supported you. He always encouraged me. He didn't push me into it. He didn't try and talk me out of it. He was very much like, do what you want to do. But yeah, he was really supportive. So so is my mum, to be fair. Absolutely. And I'm sure he gave a lot of advice as well for you before, like tips and everything before you decided. Yeah, of course. It. But I think because my dad knew the people that run the training, I think my life was a little harder. They seemed to <laughs> pick, they picked on me a little bit more, I think. It should be the opposite, isn't it? It should be protected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, people think, oh, you'll get an easy ride. It was, I think because people say that, I got an even tougher time. Could be. That's for sure. That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Another question, Greg. Let's do uh... Next question for you. Um, what your parents did or do that comforts you the most? That comforts me the most. Yeah. They're just supportive parents, mate. They're they're always they're always there for me. They would, you know, if I'm ever in a muddle, they'd both help me out. They're not together anymore, but equally they're both as supportive as each other, and that's com that's comforting enough, I think. Do you consider them um, as your best friends? Not really. I'm not actually that close with my parents. I I speak to them you know every couple of weeks or we message or whatever but I, I don't I'm not one of these people that has to speak to them every day they live at the other end of the country as well they live up in Durham in the okay. northeast of England so I don't really get to see them that often but um no I wouldn't consider them <laughs> my best friends <laughs> I would say the same as well I, I find myself close to my parents, to my mom but uh I, yeah it's a different way isn't it of, I know they're going to be there for me obviously if I need if, you know support yep. and everything but it's a different way of um of approaching that's for sure yeah. The question for you. Let's go. Yeah. Craig, what would be your best advice for someone who's like, okay, I would like to join the military uh, career. What would be your best piece of advice for this person? Listen, I'd say get get your body in shape if you're not already. Just go for runs, practice doing press ups and sit ups. Just get a good base level of fitness. Um, you, you've got to remember you're there to be broken down as a character and rebuilt into someone as what they want. So don't try and fight it and don't back chat. Just go with the flow, do what you've got to do and just never give up. Very good, very good advice. Okay, um, what do you like the most about yourself? What do I like the most? Probably my hair, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think I like the most. Just I used to. I think I used to be a bit uptight and a bit serious, and now I'm not in the military, and I've had a good few years just living a normal life. I think my favourite part about me is just being chilled out now. Yeah, and I think we're exploring a lot before wild camping. I think it's, it's about a, uh, a relaxing as well, isn't it? It's kind of yeah, terrible. completely, completely, mate. Like, like I was saying, it's my happy place. It, it's just nice to reconnect with nature, get away from all the technology and all the, the Instagram nurse. Even though I do run an Instagram account and I'm putting photos out there, but it's not about that. It's mm -hmm. that's just what comes with it. It's about disconnecting from the world, I suppose, but reconnecting with nature. That there's something um, uh, great. You look very natural when I was watching your videos. I was like, oh my god, he looks. He really enjoys what he's doing because you can see some people. Some people they do things, you know, just for doing it. But I can see that it's so natural the way you do it, the way you explain, the way you put things out there. I was like, oh my god, that's really, really nice and really. That's what I can catch the attention of people. That's what because it's natural. It's yeah, natural thank you, man. yeah. I good. Appreciate that. Next question. Let's go.
right. Now I would like you to tell me a funny story that happened to you over there in your career, like a very funny story. Just not expecting. A fun story. Oh my god. Is this for kids? <laughs> no, that was a joke. Fun story. Um, probably getting to go to Austria on a two-week skiing trip, which would cost a lot of money for someone that isn't in the military, but we were basically paid. It's called adventure training. And just to get to go out to mountainous areas and ski for two weeks, mate, it was amazing. Like, just drinking some beers and just a really relaxed environment with loads of good people. Um, it's just so fun, man. That was one of the highlights. There, there is some perks of being in the military. You get to do loads of cool sports and activities for free. Um, but yeah, just skiing in Austria, man, that's got to be a highlight. Very good. Right, next question is, um, what do you miss the most about your childhood and why? What do I miss the most? Probably the ease of not having to pay bills. <laughs> just, living, just living free, man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a child, the Christmas and my birthday, it took so long to arrive. I remember waiting for the whole year to arrive my birthday. Yeah. And but nowadays, just like that, like... Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's the thing, isn't it? Missing how slow the time used to go, because now time goes so fast. You don't even know where the last couple of years have gone. What the question. Okay, Craig, let's get another question for you. Um, what makes you most uncomfortable about yourself? Probably talking. <laughs> <laughs> most uncomfortable. I'm, a pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with most things, man. I think, funnily enough, it's doing things like this where getting put on the spot and having to answer things on the spot, mate, I actually find it quite hard. I find it like I, I don't talk about myself a lot. Do you know what I mean? I put photos and stuff out there, but I think getting put on the spot and, and getting questions asked about me, I actually find it quite hard. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm the same as well. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm very shy, I'm a very shy person, but uh, doing that kind of interaction, I feel very comfortable, but I know what I mean. It's, it's like putting the spot, answering question. It's sometimes, yesterday I was doing shoot yesterday um, and someone from Bilbao in Spain, and this person told me afterwards, Send me a message, oh my god, William. Now I'm thinking about the questions you asked me. I would I would ask in a different way, like the better way. I said yeah. that's that's always like that. When you need to answer questions, it's like you don't you don't get the, the, yeah. the right. I mean not the right, but you don't get the one what you wanted to answer, but after yeah, thing, you just answer happened. the first thing that comes to your head and then you think absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Three questions left for you, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Let's go. Next question is, um, what have you learned during this lockdown? What have I learned? Well, I've actually learned, I've probably improved more of my um, wild camping skills, mate. Because, you know, you can you can go out and do a physical exercise or stuff like that. I've been trying to just improve my skills at home, my fire lighting skills in the garden, things like that. Um, learning, learning new tricks and new recipes to cook, things like that. Are you good in the kitchen? Are you like like cooking? I do like cooking. Yeah, man. I'm a, yeah. I love cooking. I don't always cook fresh meals and stuff, but like when I do a, a good in-depth recipe, man, yeah, it feels awesome. Very good, very good. Two questions left. Yeah. Let's do it. I was watching your last video put on Instagram. Uh, how long did it take? For, did you take just one night there to do the whole camping? It was one only one night? Yeah, I do one night. I try to go out early in the morning, sort of eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and yeah, I don't like I say. I just film bits as I go. I don't re. I try not to re-record bits. I just record it as it is and then just stitch it together. So it's I'm it's recorded as it's done. So I only need a day and a night. I see. And it was just you and somebody else helping you with the, the recording? Yeah, um, some a lot of the time I go camping on my own. So I just, you put it on a tripod and just, just talk. Um, but yeah, I go with Dan, who I was with, the Bush Ape. Um, we just bounce with each other and film each other as well. Very good, very good. Right, next question is, um, if you met someone sad in the streets, what would be your advice to this person? Yeah, I would, I, would definitely, I would definitely try and comfort them and ask if they needed anything for sure. I just wouldn't know what to advise on where to go 
from there. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I think it depends the, 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 what they would say or what they would approach us. You know yeah, what I, mean? I think I'd have to react. I'd yeah. have to react to them. Yeah. Good. Ready for the last one? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Right. Last question. Ready? Yes. Let's do it. Very good one. If you could sit down with yourself when you were 13 years old, which advice would you give to yourself at the time? Sticking at school. <laughs> I'd say sticking at school and don't worry too much about the future because everything always works out all right in the end. Very good. Take things, Very good. As, take things as it comes and just try and relax. Very good. Very good. Okay, uh, Greg, it's not the end yet. Okay, so let's play now the quick thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words and just tell me one thing that comes to your mind, okay? okay. Quick thinking. Let's start with religion. Atheist. Okay. Love. Love, love. Okay. Money. Not got enough. <laughs> Family. Everything. Life. Enjoy it, live it. Sex. Amazing. Politics. Don't like politicians. Okay. Fear. Try and overcome it, embrace it, push past it. Very good. Friendship. Friendship, use it. Use it what it's for. Talk to your friends, um, share what you need to share. Absolutely. Desire. Don't get too wrapped up in the things that you desire because I think you're always, there's always the next thing that you're chasing. This is why I try and go out doing the wild camping with my kit because that's all you need. It's like a different world. Don't get too wrapped up on having the latest things, what everybody else has got. Don't worry about anybody else. Just, just do you and enjoy what you've got. Very good one. How about the regrets? You can't have them, mate. You can't change the past. You can't go back in time and redo things. It makes you who you are, so you've just got to embrace it and try and learn from it. How about success? I see. I I don't really I don't strive for success. I try and live being content with what I've got who, and who I am. But yeah, try try and get success, man. People measure success in different ways. Success to one person is different to success. Some people are fueled by money and position and. Yep but some people want success with family, relationships, just a, ha a happy life. I think success is about, it's a very personal thing, it's about peace of mind, you know, it's, you're, as you said, your success could be different of my a point of success, so there's no like, there's no like a rule. How about wish? A wish? Yeah. Um, a wish. I try not to wish, mate. I, f I try not to wish, I think you make, you've got to make your own, you've got to make your own luck, mate. Right. If I tell you uh, to define uh, just one word, if I tell you um, military career, military, one word. Stronger. Okay. How about if I tell you um, sniper? Me. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's um, let's let's pretend now I'm going to to meet your best friend, yeah, and I'm going to ask your best friend. Tell me the most beautiful thing about Greg. And tell him something that he needs to improve on. What do you think your best mate will tell me? I think they would say that I'm quite um, modest. I'm not um, arrogant. I'm not. I don't love myself. Um, as far just as your hair. Just your hair. Just love your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the hair. Um, things that I, I would change. They would probably say, "Don't try and take charge of every situation." everybody is capable of taking charge of every situation i think i try and be the person that's like right we're gonna do this here's how we're gonna do it i say i'm relaxed but when it comes to a problem i try and be the person to take it on which can which can be a good thing as well but you know but understand with me i understand sometimes you need just to let people you know get yeah. on with their their own their own side sure right let's play now greg in the magic box and you can ask me a question okay Okay, Greg, now you can ask me a question now. Okay, I'm interested to know, is it because you like interacting with people so much that you started your YouTube channel? 
Uh, I would say, I would say, uh, Greg, it's, it's a bit of everything. Yeah, I think one of the main points of interactive people. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. I think I've I've I naturally that have to always doing that in my life. For example, if I go on holidays with friends, if I go on parties, if I go like camping. I remember camping the weekend like with my friends in Canada, and I remember in the end of the night I have a beer and I go like, okay, tell me something interesting about yourself. Um, define yourself in a positive word, and uh, this kind of interaction I always do. I always done. So, so yeah, answer to your yeah, question. You, you seem really easily. You seem really easy to talk to. You are definitely very approachable, mate. Yeah, that's the whole part of the show, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm grateful and thankful for you too. When I approached you, I, I didn't think you would enjoy, we would um, accept an invitation. And you said yes. I thought, my God, good, good. I'm sure you're gonna say a lot to say. I'm sure, I'm sure. And I was right because awesome. you're so young and you have so much to say, so much to share, and that's what life's about. Just sharing, connect with people. That's what I believe. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, yeah, I just hope you had a good time. I just hope you, I made your day friendly. And um, it's been great, man. I've had loads of fun. It's been good. Yeah. If you don't mind to share a positive quote or a positive message, something that inspires you in life? Something that inspires me. Just be the best person you can be, man. Just try and just keep your head up. Keep Try and stay happy. Try and feel fulfilled. Don't sit around watching other people do what they want to do. Just go and do what you want to do, man. Because I, I watched people do the wild camping and stuff on YouTube for years, mate. And then I was just sat there one day and I thought, what am I doing? I spend all my time watching people do this. Why don't I just go and do it myself? And it's it's just so much more fun actually do it. Not that particularly, but whatever you're into, just go and do it, man. Yep. Absolutely, and, and, I, and I told you before, when I told you before, I really meant it. The way you do it, the way you put it out, you look natural. You don't pretend, you don't do it like, a, you know, some people, they do it kind of, I understand as well, when it's like business involved, people need to, you know, to do like perfect. And you know, the way you put it out, is just so natural. And so, and you lo enjoy doing it. That's the, yeah, the, that's, people, that's, the people, that's the vibe I'm going for. That's that's what I'm trying to show, mate. Just just natural as, yeah. it, as it is. Okay, thank you, mate. All the best. Take Cheers, care, okay? Mate. Keep in touch, keep in touch. Yeah, so, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And i see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.